listening to Finding Your Genius Zone with Dirk Nouvelle. It's not just a job. It's not just a paycheck. Or at least it doesn't have to be. With the help of experts across industries, Dirk helps you find your passion and career, as well as exposing the unknown parts of every vocation. Let's go deep. Let's find your genius zone right now. Here's Dirk Novell. Hey, everybody. This is Dirk Novell. Uh, thanks for joining me today. I, I'm really excited to have uh, a couple on with me. I've gotten to know Katerina and Jim Garner just recently, but I, I've, I feel like I've known them. We have mutual friends, and, and it's a small community when you grow up here. But they are photographers, and I, instead of me really kind of getting into it and telling the audience what they do, I'm going to hand it off to them in a second. But I had the experience of working with Jim recently, and you know, in my business, I'm always trying to look good. And you know, this photo actually behind me uh, was taken by Jim, and I remember we were shooting photos inside, and he says, "Let's go outside." It was raining a little bit, and. It, you know, out of all the photos, this was my favorite. So thank you again. Um, but I'm going to throw it back to Katerina and Jim, and I'm going to let them talk a little bit about their career, and then we're going to take it from there and go a little deeper. So welcome to the show. Oh, thank so great you. to be here. Yeah, thank you for having it's a us. Pleasure. Today. Thank you, guys. Um, I don't know who wants to start, Katerina or Jim. I know you guys do different things. You have different skill sets. So whoever feels, uh, you know, right, go for it. All right. She's an incredible communicator. Cool. I, I do it visually much better than verbally. So we'll have her give you the overview of kind of what we do and what we're about. Sure. So okay. um, Jim and I have owned our photography company for, gosh, 24 years. That's that's a, that's a tough one to wrap my head around sometimes. But um, And it really was a, a, a very natural evolution. It's not Jim, neither Jim or I, after we graduated from college, thought, oh, I'm going to be a photographer. I'm going to have a, a photography studio and and do all the things that we did. We sort of fell into it, if you will. <laughs> um, and Jim is the photographer and the creative talent on our team. And I handle the business side of things She's and interact, the and the um, interact with our clients mm -hmm. and 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 uh, sort of just make sure that we're, you know, staying on track and everything gets done that needs to get done. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about how how you started out and how photography really was sort of this? It's definitely a, a an incredible skill that I believe Jim was really born with that the, the components to make him a really, really great photographer. Um, <clears throat> not everybody has all of those things, I think, but you can train yourself to, to be really great at something. Um, and then there's some people, especially in creative fields, I think there's sort of this magical formula that in order to be really successful, I think are really important. We can talk about that a little later, but it's nice. Um, do you want to, do you want to maybe, you know, I, yeah, your past, you know, um, I never, I, I look back at my career now and I, I, in our career, I can't believe we've been able to do this career. This is this something that was a hobby. How do you make money with a hobby? So I never really took my hobby seriously. Um, in, in college, I studied psychology. I, I you know dabbled in pre-med and realized after volunteering in a hospital that that's not the environment I could survive. Um, I'm very ADHD, I'm hyperactive. And actually, I know now it's my superpower in this field. It's been a gift. It enables me, I believe, to see things, you know, through a, a different lens, if you will. Um, I, you know, squirrel. You know, I, ca I capture moments <laughs> through my brain is always looking and searching. So I somehow loved it as a hobby. But again, I like it's too much fun. I, I used to make a living at that. So anyways, Katarina and I met when right after college. I started with um, a software company and she was on her way out and I was just starting there and we got to know each other and thankfully uh, fell in love and we're married shortly after. Um, and I went from that software company to another and it was sales. And this is what my family expected of me. Both my parents were um, in sales. They both had sales companies. My dad owned an insurance um, small agency. My mom was in um kitchens and uh, accessory sales. So she had a showroom with employees. And so I was supposed to go into some sales job. And 
I was miserable. We were married. Go ahead, Katarina. Well, oh, no, I, I think it's important to note. I don't think your parents said you have to be in sales, but I think it was this preconceived notion mm -hmm. that Jim had that, oh, I, I, I have to do sales. This is how I am not going to be a doctor. So I'll, I'll be in sales like they were. Um, not that you felt like, oh, I'm going to just crush it. it. This is what I'm really driven to do. Um, just didn't give right? a lot of thought. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's important to, to recognize. Because yeah. People... I want to jump in real quick. Sorry yeah. to Katarina, if I cut you up, but like, this is, this is awesome. Cause this is, they, these are the voices that a lot of the people who are watching this content probably are experiencing themselves of like, not maybe hardcore pressure, but just subtle pressure of getting into something maybe their parents or whatever are in. So I love the direction this is going because I think that, um, you know, what I love eventually, which you guys can elaborate on, is how brave you were to kind of like pursue your passion, your hobby, and turn it into a business that's very successful. So um, I, I like this direction. So let's keep going down this road. Yeah. So, so we, um, and I, just a little bit of background on me, my parents are both dentists and there was no way I was going to dental school. <laughs> so I knew, and, and I think it's also important. Um, I'm actually from Sweden originally, and, and um, that's where my parents were educated. And in Europe, it's much more traditional and the, the natural path is you really decide sort of your career choice at a very young age and you don't go to a four-year school to do a lot of general subjects what the first sort of two years in the typical American college tend to be and and then you just sort of focus in on one subject there it was more I'm going to be xyz and that's the career path and I know what when I'm done I will be an architect or a nurse or whatever the whatever the case may be so I grew up here, I went to college here, and I didn't really have that, that direct path forward. So for me, it was just, I, I, I guess I felt a little bit lost in the wind, if you will. And I think maybe a lot of people feel that way. Um, but so when Jim and I met, I was, um, I had a great job with um, a retail development firm and I was in marketing and I was, I was quickly, um, Going up the ladder. Yeah, definitely quickly going up the ladder. And I had all the security and it was just a really, really solid job. And Jim was very, very unhappy in his sales positions. He did great. He's a very good natural salesperson, but he just wasn't thriving working in a cube and, you know, just having quotas every month. And it was just such a grind. And, you know, if he didn't, and he's such a creative sort of free spirit, if he didn't get along with the boss, well, that, that doesn't work out. Um, so it was just, he was unhappy. Um, and there's nothing you want, you know, your loved one that's like, he's miserable every day. Like this isn't going to work. So we, at that point, we'd, we'd been dabbling in doing photography on the side. It's just a hobby that I love. Like Jim mentioned yeah. earlier. And again, I was just like, wait a minute, I have this great gig. I have a great job. I have our, our health insurance and, you know, I really secure, um, so I suggested to Jim, why don't you just quit and, and go to photography school? Well, at that point, we thought that was necessary. Um, so he signed up at the Art Institute of Seattle, and we were still doing a bunch of photography on the side. And all of a sudden- Got I hired just, out after that first quarter. Yeah. just his. I feel like your whole demeanor changed. You're really fulfilled and, and just super excited about every, every day. Um, so we felt very, very good about our decision for Jim to quit sort of the, the sales world and corporate aspirations, or I guess it was more startups at the time, right? Startups. Um, in the late 90s. And um, yeah, we were just on a roll. I was still working full time and doing the side photography gigs with Jim, <laughs> which I'm now real. I mean, I, we quickly realized like this is not uh, sustainable. Yeah. Um, we didn't have kids at the time. We just had our little puppy and, but it, you know, we were still very young and just full of life. And we were just like, no, sure. No problem. We can, I can work on the weekend and go to work on Monday morning. No problem. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course we learned after what, a couple of years that, wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't going to work out. And at that yeah. point we were all also thinking about starting our family. So just to give you an idea, it happened so quickly. It was you're looking back on it, I don't know how we survived it. Um, 
it was so intense because so basically I was working during the week for a dot com. We were shooting eight to 10 hour days, as much product as we can, because that was when everyone's competing to the Amazons were starting. We wanted to get as much product up online as we could. So that was my weekday job. And on the weekends, we were like, let's take on some weddings. Let's kind of shoot, yeah. shoot some weddings. We didn't know how weddings were shot, but we did it our way. And that turned out to be a unique way of doing things. And so suddenly we became really popular within three years. We are shooting three weddings every weekend and working in the weekdays. And that was the beginning <laughs> of our photography career. Yeah. And so, as you can imagine, um, it, we, we couldn't fit in both. Katarina couldn't work for, for her job, um, full-time marketing. And so we made the decision to hunker down do the photography business full time, and then yeah, fast forward twenty four years, here we are. And I I want to say in in hindsight, I, I mm -hmm. don't because we really loved working together. It was really fun. We loved our clients. We we were in the same sort of age group as mm -hmm. them, and we you know we had just gotten married. I mean, it was just we just really connected and. I started having sort of this disdain for my day job um, and all the rules and, and the expectations there. And it, it was much more rewarding to be my own boss and make the decisions. And, and I, you know, it was, I felt that we were really contributing and doing something really important, which we were. Um, I don't recall that we ever really like sat down and and made a list of what are the great things that we're getting out of the career that I had and what would we actually be giving up and what would that look, what, what are, what would those things look, you know, that we would be giving up? What, what would that look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now? I don't recall that we ever really had that conversation. Yeah. We were just steam. You're almost young enough to wear, cause you know, as, you, as we get older, I'm working on the I language. As I get older, I find yeah. my, I find <laughs> myself, um, thinking differently about life. And that's the dance with this podcast is here we are fast forward years of experience of life and let's say wisdom. Yep. And we're trying to articulate that to a younger crowd that hasn't really, they don't think that way or some don't think that way. Um, but the dance is, you know, you have to get out there in life. Sometimes it's like dating, you know, to kind of know what you like. Yeah. Um, but you also, I, but, on the flip side of that, I want people to be a little more cognitive of how they're choosing their life work and paying attention to like, you know, Jim's passion of just photography or, or what consumes you? What do you like to do on a Saturday that feels like, you know, eight hours, but it feels like, you know, 30 minutes. And I, and I, you know, this whole race, you know, you and I, we all grew up in a very competitive city and world and, you know, and I, I, I remember the pressure of myself growing up, just looking around and I was thinking about money and houses on the lake and cars. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about what Dirk is naturally gifted, you know, to do. So, right. but I love, I mean, I love the, this podcast for the sake of you have a husband and wife who have a really strong relationship, who were very successful. And I'm sure, Jim, you kicked butt in sales before, but there was something missing and you guys were able to be brave enough to recognize that early on. And you, you, and I think that the audience needs to hear these types of stories because those were voices in your head that you, you leaned into and acted yeah. upon. And a lot of people don't. So I love that. But what I want to do right now, if it's okay, is, okay, let's talk about the life behind being owning a photography company. And, right. you know, we can talk a little bit about the, the skill sets that you both have, what you do, but, you know, people can Google and like think they know what it's like. I mean, my wife's had many friends get into this business only to get out just because it was a hard business to scale. And before they knew it, their lives were, they didn't have a life. So right. um, why don't we get into kind of like what people don't know, the good and the bad about your career. And again, the goal isn't to push people away from pursuing this, but maybe you're giving them insight that they need to know. Um, and maybe they're going to run harder to become a, a photographer after they watch this podcast. But what is it like to, to live in your world? Jim. You start with this Oh, geez. <laughs> well, you know, one thing I'm going to have to share and, and, um, 
we started our, like Jim said, we started the, the photography. We, we really ramped up the wedding photography work. We were very, very good at it and we were very successful and, and not to brag about what we were doing, but it was, it was kind of like wildfire. We didn't need to advertise. It was all word of mouth. I mean, we really sort of blew up, which felt very, very great. And, um, I think it, it was just sort of this snowball effect. And then Jim started to get recognized on more of a national level uh, for his style. We were entering some competitions and then all of a sudden we're now at the, you know, at the speaker, speaker um, circuit um, traveling around, not just nationally, but internationally teaching other wedding photographers what the magic sauce was. Um, so that was sort of a whole nother branch that, that we were doing. And, um, and that, um, where am I going with this? I, uh, and, and we just really had like, that was a, a sort of another rebirth and then reinventions. You know, yeah. So that's where this I was going. Thank this you. This theme is of reinvention yes. is it's required to, to be in, in this field. I believe so. Yeah. Regular reinvention, yeah. annual reinvention. Um, that's a, at the time with the wedding photography and what Jim was, what he was teaching on the focus of reinventing yourself mm -hmm. and when I look now, you know, 24 years we've been doing this, we have reinvented so many times. Fast forward, um, we had kids. I no longer wanted to leave my my babies, my toddlers, my young daughters um, with, you know, a babysitter when I went to wedding. So so we weddings, started, so started, we weren't together during our wedding, right. so we which is our connecting change. time. So. Well, so we had to change that formula. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a few years later, we realized, well, wait a minute, we now they're sort of, you know, five, six, seven elementary school age. We don't want daddy to be gone every single weekend. Um, and so we realized yet again, we have to sort of reinvent ourselves. And, you know, 20, 24 years later now, we don't we don't photograph weddings anymore. We're, we're completely out of that market. Um, Entirely commercial work now. Yeah. And and that was yeah. a very intentional um, evolution, and I think that's something that's very important in this particular industry. In marketplaces like Seattle, you have to continually reinvent yourself as a photographer. You have to be um, willing to do, you know, have diversity with your skills. Yeah. Like, you know, we shoot one day we're we're photographing, you know, umbrellas for Costco last week. The next day, we uh, have a group of attorneys. We're doing their group shots and headshots, um, photographing jewelry. That's something that we're going to be doing next week. Yeah, you know, we we're not just for your audience. We're not just photographers. We have we've had to branch into other areas. So video, we do drone work for architectural work. So we have a, a brand that just does real estate photography. We have a brand that just does corporate headshots. We have a brand that just only focuses on um, product photography so yeah. that we, we can we can find enough clients to fill our calendars because if we focused on one thing one niche in in our um marketplace uh we would wither and wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to make a, a living at it so okay. it's yeah it's a it's it's a grind to just to keep because one of the downfalls, you know, of, of this career is that we never know what we're going to be doing the next day. We do. We plan ahead. Right. Obviously, Katarina manages the schedule, tries to put things that are similar next to each other. But I might on some days be photographing product in the morning and a high school senior in the evening. And I have to switch my my thinking and, and my, my well, brain waves in order to do that. It, so, it, you know, we're not it sounds like we're extremely scattered, but it, it took a while for us to really hone and understand, but we can't be that spread out and crazy. We we have to have more structure. And I think as our as we became older and more experienced, we realized we we can't just be sort of flopping in the wind and just take whatever we can mm -hmm. get. I mean, that's not I don't want to paint that picture, but instead really learning, okay, this is what we want to focus on. This is how we need to sort of categorize our time. And another really big thing that I think a lot of creatives do is just when they have their own small business is just let clients tell them when they're going to be photographing and when they're going to be available, because that's, you're just, you know, in the beginning, you just want to get the gig. I remember very, very well setting boundaries. 
of course. Yeah, we just, you know, we're, we're shooting a bunch of families on Saturday and Sunday, but when we weren't doing weddings and I just looked at Jim, I'm like, what are we doing? We have no control. Like, why am I, why is, why am I letting this woman, this, you know, and for me, I was still very young, this powerful, wealthy woman tell me when we're going to show up. So I remember it very distinctly. And I, at that moment, I sort of realized, well, wait a minute, I actually have the control here. So really just taking the control and learning that I, I can yeah. be in charge. The clients um, really respect you more if, yeah. if, if you yeah. um, do that. And yeah. that's, that. That's why our partnership is, I would give it away. I, I mean, this is, again, I, this is like a, 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 a incredible gift. I get to share this natural talent I have. Like, I, I feel like I can't charge for it because it's, it's fun. And I, yeah, that I wouldn't work very well. Katerina. <laughs> and this is a problem. A lot of photographers have, I mean, yeah. it's, it's rampant in our industry. Yeah. And, it, and that's why our, this partnership's really worked well because she mm -hmm. can crack the whip on me. Well, and yeah, just, it's a different, we were very, different she sees it as a, as a, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I love it. I, so one thing I want to get into, you said a lot of good stuff. I, and I, I keep going back to the mindset of, someone watching this and thinking about. So, you know, I remember out of college, I worked at, I was a bartender and I started working at some of my, one of my favorite bars and then it changed the bar. Like I didn't, it wasn't right. so fun anymore. Like going to that bar, it was yeah. kind of a <laughs> you um, know, the backside. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's really like, it's, it's okay. We're talking about the job, but I think that people need to really, this is kind of the gist behind the podcast is, you got to understand the lifestyle that you're getting yourself into. And what you're, de what you're describing is, you know, if I was to translate that to somebody that's thinking about it is you've got to be willing, especially early on until you are successful, you might miss birthdays and weekends oh. and trips with your friends that are going to Cabo and, and I mean, but you guys have done well enough to where you've been able to kind of like get into normal normal working hours control your schedule take ownership yeah. but but if you're going to pursue this career you're not going to step in and be the big boss right away you're going to have to pay your dues and i don't know you know that could take years and years and years but it, and, and the other thing i i, I think is interesting is like your industry and i don't know if sexy is the right word but there's jobs out there that sound exciting and fun and you're traveling and you're you're meeting cool people and fashion and new york and paris yeah. and but i mean there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that's not so sexy yeah. right no, for, sure. for sure and i think that's it could it. be a, a real misnomer people think oh gosh that's so cool well it it's really it it is a grind and if if we're not shooting we are not that our that our photography business is not making money so over the years jim and i have been fortunate enough we've diversified into other areas but in the beginning yeah it's it's definitely a grind and i do remember mm -hmm. we were still I, I think it was before we had the girls i i started feeling like man you know we don't really even get invited to things anymore because our friends just know that we're not going to be available so that was, I remember a bit, I sort of mourned that a little bit, but at that point we were, we were in too deep and it's not like I would have, I don't think I would have changed anything, but I just remember very vividly realizing like, wow, this is an actual, like we've created this and now we are just kind of not thought of, um, mm -hmm. for a lot of social things. And, and, you know, and that's really important thing that balance, like that life work balance we that was totally out of whack in in the early part of our career which i would say now and how much time jim and i you know i'm about to turn 50 and and just how much i i value the the work life balance and just self care just mm -hmm. because you know as you age you 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 kind of have to it's it, you don't really have a choice but in the beginning you know those early times it was just grind right like we had no concept of that we someday maybe wouldn't be able to keep that pace yeah um you said a couple of things one is scalability that maybe right. we don't have to talk about but i think it's interesting like i'm in a business that i start over every month and yeah. if i don't fund a loan i don't make any money and so right. what no one ever explained to me is the whole concept of recurring revenue like i have we have buddies you know friends i'm sure mutual friends that are in financial management 
um, yeah. or commercial insurance where they're building a book of business where they essentially get paid in their sleep as long as they renew it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really interesting you bring that up because you don't go to work, you don't make money. Um, right. That's a big deal. Um, really so big deal. Talk to me about, you know, in every job, like for me, freedom is like the most important thing. So I can wake up with my kids. You know, I brought my son to school today. I've coached all their sports. I didn't realize at 24, 25, you know, my dad was a pilot gone half the month. I wanted wow. to travel internationally, but I didn't realize how important like my freedom and my ability to stay home and not miss birthdays or holidays. You know, there's things like time, life, you know, balance you brought up. Katerina, what are the things like the three or four things that are non-negotiables for you in your industry that you're getting out of being a photographer? Like as far as the career itself, like, you know, the freedom, um, you're not having to play the game of politics and, you know, go, go to an office and be locked in an office from eight to five. What are the things that you would say yeah. are really important for you in your career that you have? Well, one of the things for me personally, I would say that the greatest benefit of having our own photography studio is I've been able to be mom and, and not just when the girls were little, but even now we are, our oldest is at um, a sophomore in college and our, our youngest is a junior in high school, but I'm still very, very much a part of and available to them when they need me. And it, I, I just... You know, I have so much respect for for couples and women who go to work eight to five or even, you know, longer hours um, that that luxury. And it is an incredible luxury that I have that I've been able to work, but also have that balance. And I'm incredibly grateful for it because really that that is like air to me um, being available to my family and just being there when they need me and just knowing them on it on a much much deeper level um has it, it's just it's the most important thing to me so and again that's that's something that we've been able to create that 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 freedom um awesome. and i think jim just in the beginning one of the things that because he was really really great at sales like he was always just you know number one sales guy for the month and and, and it was that was so impressive but for somebody with jim's energy and creativity being in a you know at the time sitting in a cubicle all day was literally crushing his spirit um even though he was successful technically on paper his soul was not flourishing yeah. at all so, so um i think the greatest benefit for me you know as stated I'm, you know very hyperactive need to be moving need, need to see things happen around me and I need, I can't, I can't have a regular routine. And this is, there's a cost and, you know, benefit to, to the fact that we yeah. in, within our careers do not have a routine. We can't, I can't tell you it's what, challenging. I, I, you, you know, a lot of people need that like workout for, for nine to structure, 10 yeah. structure in their life. You can't have it in this career because we have to be certain places at certain times, depending on the weather, depending on the client's <laughs> needs. So every day is unique. I love that because that's like, think about it. How, there's a lot of people that really need to feel safe mm -hmm. and to have structure. And what you're explaining is this is a career that you're probably not going to get it. So mm -hmm. you have to be, be ready for it. Be ready for crazy, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they all are different days. Yeah. Um, is there, Katerina, is there one more thing about your job? I, I love what you said, because you're present, you, you're, you're part of your family's life and you're not missing out on anything. Is there another, but for both you, another component of your job that you just absolutely love? You know, for me, and it's it's different now, when we were in the, what we call retail photography, meaning family photography, weddings, um, you know, you think senior portrait work, that's a very personal relationship with your client. You get to know them very, very well. And some, I mean, some families, we started photographing really going back to the couple's wedding. And then we grew with them and photographed their babies. And then literally all the way through to now they're graduating from high school. I mean, that's a long-term personal, it becomes personal. And that is incredibly special. Some of our Super best fun. friends, we've, we've literally met because we photographed them, at, you know, their wedding, um, which is 
just what an incredible gift, right? What a life gift from work. And then you know, as we turned into commercial work, that kind of goes away. Then it's very much more, a, you know, business to business relationship. It's no longer, it's just no longer personal. I might be working with a project manager for a few years and, and really have a great rapport with them, but then, you know, then they moved to New York or whatever. Um, and then that, I'll never talk to them again. So it's just, it's a very different um, relational experience. Both are I find, but and and very good, but it's it's definitely different. Can it real quick? I want to ask you more about that because that's interesting. You have different clientele that give you different things, and and okay. I would assume that you know you you articulated the benefits of the friends and letting them into their lives and being part of that experience. I would think are there benefits of maybe having more of a business formal type relationship with clientele like it's kind of cool like what you're talking about is you have kind of the best of both worlds and it might be good to kind of mix it up a little bit mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think so i i and again that you know that what i was referencing earlier with the retail photography that's actually i believe to be successful in that genre of photography it's really one of the sort of secret sauce it's one of the ingredients to have the skill set to become very personal with the client that's mm -hmm. that's a super important part um don't you agree jim yeah and you know a lot of well if you're going to be in retail photography you have to have the interpersonal skill set absolutely but, but yeah. often those photographers aren't very business-minded or sales-minded so true. This is a chronic problem in, in our industry and, and something that we've tried to help a lot of photographers along yeah. the way with our talks and conventions mm -hmm. and whatnot is to to marry those two things. Right. Um, well, we saw an opportunity there, right, to, yeah. to be able to like it's not enough to just be able to take great photos. And now today with the incredible photography equipment it's just opened up this industry to so many more people if they're just creative. But unfortunately, there's there's the business several other care. components that are absolutely essential in order to, to support a family. And it, I believe, you know, unless you just become some, I don't can know. You, can, you talk, can you talk about like that, what you're kind of alluding to? No. Like what is so crucial? Like what, what would sink a photography company like yours I mean, like I've photographed with Jim and Jim's got a really great way of making you feel relaxed and safe and opening up. I mean, that's that's his genius zone. Uh -huh. um, but you're right. I mean, there, you got to make money and you got to market yourself and you've got to I mean, there's a business to it as well. What, what do you see like is, you know, is there one or two things that are absolutely crucial um, to be successful on the business side? You know, I, I definitely really the, the cost of goods in what you're doing how many what is your actual cost a lot of creatives feel like oh well i'm photographing i'm doing what i love and then i'm going to work in post production for you know 5 hours on this one shoot i did and it, it it just they're not they're forgetting sort of well wait a minute you charged let's say $500 and you did the shoot and you bought you have all your equipment that you purchased to go do that shoot and at the end of the day, you're making ten dollars. You know, because you poured your is... heart and your passion, and that's fine. But it's really not sustainable if you're actually wanting this to be a profitable business. It works if it's still your hobby or maybe a hobby business. But I think that was one of the very early on things that we learned. Because again, like Jim, that isn't. It's interesting because you're so great at sales, but when you were actually the one it's taking my it, product, it is, I want to it's give it away. uncomfortable, <laughs> right? It just felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and would pour a lot of time into designing these incredible albums or whatever it was. And um, and it really took practice to realize we have to monetize all of Jim's time and all the, the team, you know, we used to have several employees supporting that. Um it, and and I think that would be one of the main things and you you have to you have to have time to market yourself. Yeah. And if all you're doing so, is yeah. pouring your work, you know, time into your your craft and not the actual most important part of the business side of of what you do, you, you're likely not to make it in the in the long term. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it. We've we've taught classes uh, you know, um Seattle universities and 
I, I will tell you that, and even my, I went to Art Institute for one quarter, and I think there's one other person in my class that's that is still a successful photographer. My personal classes oh, that I taught, I know, two, and I taught two, uh, two semesters. I think there's a total of two yeah. that are are still working, um, and. It, you know, they weren't diversified from the get go. The market was ultra competitive. You know, the digital world. Now, when we started, it was film only. Digital was just beginning. Mm -hmm. And so that instant feedback, that seeing that image come back. So you can imagine when I was shooting, when we were shooting our first weddings, we didn't see the pictures that we were taking for up to two to three weeks for that film to be processed. And then you get the feedback three weeks later. Yeah. It's nerve wracking as heck. Right. Because, you know, you don't know if you screwed up. You don't know if you're doing a good doing things right or not. Now you see it instantly and you can adjust immediately. Everyone becomes very good very quickly and everyone thinks they can have a career in it. So, yeah, it is extremely competitive. Thankfully, we had established ourselves before that revolution took mm -hmm. place so that we were able to continue with our you know clientele and, you know, the resources that we put together. All our equipment has been paid for, et cetera. But, uh, yeah. It's I a, love it. It's an adaptation. I, I, I'm laughing because I'm listening to you. And I I was the guy who always took photos, even in high school. And I'd always, my buddies would always give me a hard time. Like there's Dirk with his camera again. But I remember like, I'd always send my film into Costco and I was yeah. so excited to get yeah. it back. Cause I didn't know what I was going to get. Uh, like when I went to Europe, you know, I took probably 15 rolls, yeah. but it's it's interesting because it's like I would think that and I don't know how to say this, but, you know, with technology, everybody thinks they can be a photographer and maybe they can capture good shots. But you must have um, it must be a, a joke inside the house, like like there's another person that thinks they can be a photographer uh, and maybe they can. I'm not talking negatively about it, but I would think there's a lot of people that think they can do what you do. And then, like you said, you had two people in your class and only two of the class are still in the business. So I think it's important audience to like, listen, and there's a lot more to taking a snap and editing it. And, you know, it, yeah. there, it's a lot of work. Well, and, you know, we actually decided to capitalize on that um, because, again, we we were really established at the time we did the digital uh, photography revolution really occurred. And we were like, hey they don't really know what they're doing. They, they think they know, and they have this really great piece of equipment that, that, and they might have a great eye, but they don't fully know the, the gist of the, it. The and so we, it. that is when we really sort of doubled down on educating these photographers. We're like, great. We're, you know, and we never felt threatened in any way. We never felt even in our Seattle market, it, I was referring out jobs all the time to new photographers because I, and I never the phone felt, just rang and rang. Yeah, well, I just yeah. didn't feel they were not a threat to us because we already had, we were established and we were, you know, Jim was really on the forefront and um, just had this great following, but we just kind of took advantage of that opportunity. And, and that's another thing. It's again, it's about that reinvention and constantly being on the forefront of, you know, this is not a career where you're just going to go to the office and do the same thing every day and it's always going to be the same that is not i think it's, it's important so to different. say at that stage of our career we had the foresight to actually just do some planning around this reinvention yeah. move That's we thought true. to ourselves we can pour some energy into this and it will be a ride that we will enjoy for no longer than five years and then we'll we will have passed on what we can yeah. give to this to the photography community and then we need to focus back on our business. Otherwise, because we saw it happen with other educators, they became entirely reliant upon the income from their, their lectures and the products that they sold at their lecture. So we're like, okay, we'll do this for five years. Right. Knowing that we we were not going to want to be, you know, the oldest ones there still walking the halls at the convention, <laughs> trying to teach what, what was really hot in, you know, yeah. <laughs> 2010 or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we really planned that. And I think that's what's super important. In the very beginning of our photography career, there wasn't a whole lot of planning. I think we just sort of, we fell into it. We kind of blew up. And then about 
10 or so years in, we were like, wait a minute. Okay. We have to forecast this out. We have to really long game. Um, and I, and I guess I, for, for, for a new photographer or a, maybe a 20 something that's contemplating this career choice, just slowing down and, and just having that lore, long game forecasting exercise, yeah. super important. Like, and, where and do you really want to see yourself? So we and not just fall into that, you know, I'm so busy. I'm super, you know, popular and sought after. You, you have to think, okay. So uh, one, okay. You got to think monthly, how, how am I going to change things up? You, like, Oh, I need to reset my portfolio. I need to update the website. I need, these are the micro things. Um, then there's the, every six months, like you have to have a six month goal. That website needs to be redone and I need to be doing marketing materials to, to this area. Okay. And then there's the, the one year planning. The one year planning is like, I should be receiving fruit from those, the month, the month that I did a year ago. And if not, you need to change your course. So we, it, it takes to start any business or for us, a new brand or um, a reinvention of any type. Uh, we know it's going to be a, um, a, a lot of steps in a one-year plan. You might start seeing fruit at three years and you could be pretty darn established at five. So we have um, a headshot business um, called Flash Folios. That was okay. This is the idea. We want to we want to go for um, law firm photography. We want real estate brokerage firms to come to us. We want individual um, uh, real estate companies. We we just want headshots and we want group shots. Beautiful, all, beautiful mortgage that's brokers. Right that's you yeah. part of that brand. So that took us that took us. Three years yeah. before we saw fruit. Yeah. After five, now this thing is we can count on at least 20 to 30 headshots per month. Yeah. And sure. it's just running itself. So this is the um fruits of the labor of five years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh three years ago, we started another brand that, that just caters to uh real estate, commercial real estate, interiors, exteriors. And I mentioned we do drones, we do video, we do 3D tours with this thing called a Matterport for a commercial and residential real estate brokers. So we're in our, I'd say, third year now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we we were established with a, about five firms, I would say. Yeah. And we're doing two to three properties per month. Which is where um, we wanted to be. So we're we sort we we set a trajectory on how many we wanted, how many real estate brokers we wanted to work with and sought them out specifically um, because we want to, again, really establish a, a strong relationship. We want them to think of us as an extension of their team, um, not a question of who they're going to call. We're, they're automatically going to, oh, we have a listing. We're going to call, you know, Jim and Katerina. So, so we do everything in, with our, in our brand, we do everything from their personal headshots to photograph their properties. And so they can just trust us that we're always going to be um, their one-stop shop. Yeah. And that's a, a sort of an evolution and maturity of our business that we've, you know, we, we specifically thought it out and planned for it. So currently we're planning a new, a new seed that if, if you want, I'll tell you about it. Yeah. We'll, we'll be talking about this in three to five years and that's, uh, a sports photography business. And that is, that, that's going to be passive income for us because we're going to hire out the operators who go to these teams. And the concept is, it, it is a, um, uh, it's a mobile studio, if you will. And it doesn't take, the photos won't take place on the field, interrupting their practice games and all that stuff, but they just pop over, have a quick photo taking, mm -hmm. and the images are composite, team composite, just like a professional sports team that you see the Seahawks for in our in our region. They're all kind of looking cool and composite together as a team. That's the what we're going to launch locally, and hopefully we can pick up. This is a scalable version of of our business because it could be local, it could be regional, it could be. You know, I love it. I love it. I mean, this is an example, folks, of like it doesn't it doesn't get I mean, you got to be innovating and you got to be pushing it. And you guys are doing that. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, like, what do you you know, some of the conversations I've started to incorporate the whole AI 
and I'm not going to ask AI in terms of how would it ever replace this career, but I, AI does scare me. But in terms of your industry in 15, 20 years, do you guys ever think that far out? Like, do you think if you, if you do, what, what is, I mean, people need to think about the longevity of careers and will they be around? Do you feel like um, this industry will be around for a long time? Well, I certainly think the retail photography will because AI can't replace your wedding photos or your, 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 your baby, child's sports you know, photos or your, it's, or it's, your, ba- you know, your child grew up there. Um, they're yeah, exactly. When they're growing up, but yeah, it, it definitely will have an impact on, I think, I mean, if you just look at stock photography, it, so many things that we, commercial photographers do today that it definitely will have an impact. And I don't think we have, we really don't know what that's going to be yet. Now, I kind of also think back when the iPhone came out, everyone was just so worried that, oh, the iPhone is going to replace the need for photographers and you know everybody. And yeah, we can get amazing photos with our iPhones, but it certainly hasn't replaced our career. Um, do you remember that? Like it was a really big scare. We did. We did. And, and the high resolution video you can pull a still out of that too. Right. That's another thing that's changed so much. I mean, the, the well, song, that was a concern was a for concern. school photographers. Oh, oh the everything's going to be done on video. Take over. That's not what's happened at all. Um, yes, it's possible to do. And it's certainly with AI, I mean, we really don't know, but. But we're thinking about it. We know that AI will further damage the stock photography world. Oh, for sure. Which was hammered years ago. Unfortunately, there's people that their entire career was well, photographing stock imagery. They did great. And, selling, yeah. and they did great. I remember when I was in school, we had a stock photography shooter come speak to us. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool avenue to go. He, he's no longer shooting, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yes, you could now describe what you'd like to see and have um, AI create that for you. And that's a scary prospect. And it's obviously exponentially growing in its power. Um, but like Katarina said, you can't AI your child's face. You can't AI your wedding photos. Yeah. And and there will always be a need for e- e-commerce imagery. So commercial shots of a particular Specific, product. Yeah. Um, yeah, renderings can be done. That's impacting us in uh, in some ways, but the, yeah, the still image will all, always have. Uh, yeah, as long as we're be, yeah. targeting the right client, always have a purpose. I think so. Yeah, and I asked the question not to scare people, or you know, I'm just it's it's an interesting. I I was watching a podcast the other day, and it's starting to uh, replace supermodels. So yes. you can, you can go to sites and you can create whatever look you want, you know, and voila. Um, okay, so we're winding down here a little bit, and I always want to. There's a few questions I don't want to um, miss with you two. Uh, and by the way, one thing that's really apparent to me is the need for um, the right relationship and support. And like I see that it works really well with you, the dynamic, and that's something to consider. You know, if you're going to have a spouse or a partner or whatever is, you know, you might be in a, a situation to where you're gone a lot or you're being taxed and, and you're, and that's, you're going to have to have um, the right support system, I think, because this isn't like a, a nine to five gig where you can just come home. And so I think it's really great that you guys have figured out a way to make this work so well, because I can tell, I'm just thinking in my own life with my wife, it's like, this would be tough, really tough, especially as you get older. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what is, what is one thing, um, and I don't want to be negative, but like, what is one thing like, I mean, I'll just be blunt. One thing you really don't like about this career that maybe you didn't see coming, or maybe you knew about it, or maybe it's just gotten worse over time. Um, mm-hmm. That, and the reason I bring this up is again, I just wanted to be real crystal clear and no BS about well, and not romanticized because yeah. again, like I said, I think that photography is, is a romanticized career choice. And a lot of people when, you know, even like I know my daughters, when they say, oh, my dad's a photographer, like their friends would be like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Well, is it though? <laughs> it's just, but it's that, that conception, right? So um, totally. talk yeah. about, talk about, so we're together all the time. It's the opposite of what, you know, most people have with their careers. A lot of people like your dad left for two, two weeks out of the month. Mm-hmm. And thank God. From, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank well, you know, um, 
we have to actually schedule time apart because it, 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 it's because, just not healthy. I don't think for anyone to, you know, especially when you're wearing very different roles, like, okay, we're in work mode now. And I have to, you're like a bit, my business partner, but I'm really mad at you because you, you know, you didn't like do the dishes or whatever, like there's sort of this like nagging thing in the background. Yeah. And to separate that can be really, really hard. There is. Yeah. There are times in our relationship that we are, we are way more the business partner side of For sure. of, of the things than an actual yeah. uh, couple, a couple. And and so we've, we've converged and diverged along the way, Yeah, uh, but always, always come, come back to being close, but that in itself is a heck of a lot it's of a work. Tri- trial for sure. And it's beautiful work. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it is, you know, working together is definitely a mixed blessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, it's not on the same, it's not like always quality time. It's, yep. it's often just grinding work. I don't think I would, I, I think my, I could work with my wife. I don't think she would want to work with me, um, yeah. to be quite sure. honest. Yeah. And, you know, like one of the things with Katerina it, that I remember when I first met you, I think you were just coming back from a week at Esalon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's how you say it, Esalon. But, you know, we have that common, you know, we have we, we talked a little bit about the stuff. Yeah. So I think now I kind of see like, Jim, you're going in a couple of weeks. I mean, yeah. I re, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you guys are very proactive about honoring your your time away so you come back energized and rejuvenated yeah Yeah. esalon being i don't know if your your viewers listeners know esalon's a wonderful um uh place to rejuvenate and uh it's it's a wellness retreat location we'll say right and different speakers come and and uh your viewers may may know about it but yes katarina came back a completely different person a, a few months ago and i'm like it's my turn. Yeah. To, yeah. I'm yeah. going to go do some work it's on myself great. and then we'll come back together. When, when we return, it will be a renewal once it, again. I think what's really important and not, you know, not, not everybody has the time to go away for a week to do self, self focus, self exploration work. But even what I wish I had known early on in our career is the incredible importance of self care and and figuring out what that is i mean it's 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 different i think than like going to the gym and getting a workout in and being physically fit but just doing the internal mental emotional work has been profoundly important to us in the last i would say two years one to two years where it's become a major focus and i wish so much that i had that all along it's something that i really preach to my young daughters that it's, you know, you you do not want to wait until your mid forties when maybe you're having some sort of personal crisis or you're seeing other friends going through really, really hard um, emotional things and their relationships or their work life or whatever it is, but to start your adult life, start your career with figuring out what that is for you. Like, is it, is it going on retreats? Is it practicing meditation and yoga or is it, you know, playing music or I, I don't know what, like what, whatever your thing is that sort of fills your soul, even for a short period of time every day would be one of my main pieces of advice. Okay. I don't care what career you're doing. Um, just seeing that that's instrumentally important. So to important. Well. Men- men- mentorships are absolutely critical in the, in the creative field. Um, connecting with other people you're not competing with other creatives you're one entity together you need to be supported one another and that's why we got so excited about doing that educational route Mm -hmm. passing it on Mm -hmm. um yes having having a you know someone to guide you a life coach of sorts um having a, a counselor emotional counselor that's something you should never avoid because um this is a field of emotion, you're passing on in, in, in your heart. And if that's not solid, it'll impact your work significantly. So, you know, we've embraced, you know, regularly seeing counselors to, to help us with our interpersonal struggles or in you know, our relationship struggles along the way. And we're so grateful that we've had to do that because because that's honestly what's what's given us the strength to do this all these years. So, yeah, no, I love it. I mean, you guys, I can tell. Uh, you're super strong couple. And I think it takes 
a strong relationship to do what you're doing. And I think that's worth noting for the audience is, you know, you've got to have the right partner, uh, yeah. I believe, to go down this road together. So a couple last questions, and I'll let you guys choose who wants to answer them. One question is, if you could go back in time coming out of school, would you do it different? And uh, I'll let whoever wants to answer that go for it. And then I'll ask the second question after you guys respond. You, have, you, you actually have, have talked about that answer recently. Um, I, I think I do, even though we have, you know, it's, we've had a really, really great run. We're still on a great run. I think for me personally, I struggle with what if I hadn't given up that career path that I was on and that I was really good at. And I, I, I really, I think if I had stayed that course, where would I be today? That that's a question that I've asked myself throughout time. Um, and I think potentially because yes, we're a photography team, but really Jim is the photographer and I'm more of the sort of the back end. Um, there have definitely been times throughout our career where I felt, I wouldn't say jealous, but definitely felt a little bit less appreciated. Yeah. And it's not even, the, it's not about get, receiving accolades, but it's just an internal question. What could I have done if I wasn't partner slash supporting Jim? Um, because obviously if Jim isn't taking pictures, then there's no business. So that's something that I've struggled with. And, and I think it may be also being a woman and, and carving out, um, you know, my, my space, even though my truly, my role as mother is absolutely my, my greatest joy. And, and I'm so, so passionate and so incredibly proud of having raised two incredible daughters. Um, but yeah, th that's something that I, I, I think, would I have done anything differently? I might've still chosen the path that we did, but I, I, I think I wish I had spent a little bit more time. I wish I had talked to some people that, that were older. So, you know, not just assumed I'm full of energy and full of life and I know what I want to do. And this is, I'm going to, you know, I'm in love and I'm just going to jump in and do this, but just slow down a second and really leaned on um, some advisors and mentors that, that maybe would have given me some, some advice. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's super, super important. I, by the way, I really appreciate the honest response. Um, you know, like there, there's a, I, I really love these personality tests. There's one that I love called the Enneagram. Yeah. And, and I've done, I've done seminars at university of Santa Monica, just going deep on this. And one of the, it's a person, there's nine personality types and mine is type four, which is, you know, I, I feel embarrassed mentioning, but it's like the need to be special. It's an, in, it's the individual. And you know, I've struggled a lot in different careers where I don't feel special, where I don't feel like my God's gifts, talents are being utilized. And so I think what you just mentioned is really good for people to to listen and recognize is the fact that, you know, honor who you are, honor what you need and and try to find a career or an environment that will foster that and yeah. give you that because I get it. Like just being blunt, like Jim's the photographer, he's out, he's kind of like the quarterback and maybe he's doing what sounds like the fun stuff. And then here you are doing the business stuff, you know, right. which, which is crucial, but yeah. maybe you don't sometimes feel as special or you don't feel like the talent, but right. I mean, I can tell you probably what it's equal. Like, I mean, without you, you know, the, yeah, the, the sure. business, and I know that Jim knows that as well, but but I do think it's great and brave of you to mention that because you have to consider and you have to pay attention to that little, you know, Katarina inside or that little person inside that, you know, is still a child. And, you know, we, we, we have needs. And I, I think the point of me rambling right now is to honor those needs in your career. 100% agree. And Thank to listen that. to that little voice. But yeah. Not yeah. That little voice. I, I tried to do that as much as I can. So the last question, Jim, I'll throw it at you is, okay. So God comes down and says, no photography, throw your cameras away. Uh, what is a dream job? Like what is, what's that? If you could do anything like yeah. not, totally out of bounds in terms of what you've been doing in your career is, is there one, or, I mean, yeah. sometimes the question is, I'm sorry, I'm doing it, but is there, <laughs> is there one? 
Yeah, you know, um, yeah, it would be food related. It okay. would be it would it would be to serve people a similar product, but in the form of delicious food. It'd yeah. be a little tiny restaurant someplace, you know, in a remote location, foraging, foraging the the not too remote. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> Pacific Northwest. We have we have yeah. our we have our, our our beautiful forageable seasonal foods that I would be cooking for them over yeah. over wood. So you love to cook. I do. I do. And it's a common thing with creatives, yeah, uh, photographers sure. and uh, Any often, creative. Yeah, yeah. often I love to to feed to cook and and chefs often have a hobby of photography. It's it's very it's very common. It's a, definitely cooking, I think, is a I have so many creative friends and interior designers, artists, photographers, video people. They just it, it, food is another experimenting with food and it, it's just another extension of that gift. Yeah, so yeah. the other night sometimes I just want to tap out and not think about it. And that Bradley Cooper movie was on where he's a chef. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We love that. Oh yeah. my God. And he's I think he was crashing someone's apartment and the the guy and the gal were trying to sleep and he was up all night cooking and um, I, I just love, I mean, I don't know how realistic that is, but, um, I could see, a, I could see as a chef there, Jim, I'd come eat at your restaurant for sure. I would love to cook for you, by we the would way. love to have you at Jim's, Jim's place. <laughs> my wife actually is talking, you know, my wife's a nutritionist and she's really into the, you know, healthy, not, you know, organic, non, I mean, she's deep, deep in that kind of stuff. And we live in North Bend and, um, they just opened up a smoothie shop where my daughter's working and it's all gluten-free, super healthy. And um, we're starting to wonder if there's a demand for that farm yeah. to ta table thing here in North Bend. I don't know, maybe, maybe not now, but I hope soon. So yeah. I could, I could see us doing something like that. Okay. So is there anything on the tip of your tongues before I end this that, you know, again, the why is there's people that are struggling, that are stressing out, that are making a bigger deal out of it. Is there something, last piece of advice that you can give to somebody that's like, just having a hard time and, and they're like, I don't know what I want to do. Right. It, I, I think, I think for, for me, just really sit with yourself, like carve out that time and really think about what is it that I'm good at? Maybe not great, but just what am I good at? And what is it that, that I think I can bring to other people and and you know what is that what is that gift and how can i incorporate that maybe it's not your career but don't don't silence that Ugh. voice well inside said. that gift that you've been given well said i can't imagine where we would be had i listened to that voice a decade earlier when i was just right. a hobby you know i started at 27 right yeah you know 28 so but yeah listen to that voice and and have it guide you into this future career, but know that in, I think the creative world, if it's photography or, you know, being an artist or any, anything in the creative world, you're going to have to reinvent regularly. It's going to, it's going to change it in a faster and faster pace. And yeah, you, can, you have I love to, it. You to adapt. You know, the, sorry, one more thing, like you're making me think of, like, I've had a couple people on that are really big in the apparel industry and and you're super creative, Jim. But what I've realized is, you know, the importance of creativity only takes you so far. And so for those people that are super creative and wanting to find a career, I think what you kind of elaborated or illustrated very well in this podcast is there's a lot more to it in terms of being successful. The creativity on its own doesn't, it's not the elixir. It's just part of the equation. Um, and I've realized, especially with Katerina, how important that is. So um, I know I keep saying one last question. Um, <laughs> do you guys think that like you have two daughters, one's in college, one's in high school. If they came to you and they wanted to follow in your footsteps, would you be a proponent of them getting into this business? No. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's honest response. I don't think I would actually. No, I think, I th I think the starting point for this career has changed so much yeah. since we started. Yeah, okay. it's a lot more competitive, yeah. and I think it's you, you know I, for your listeners, 
there's nothing wrong with doing this on the side and making yeah, some extra money. Absolutely. Um, and there's also there's also a, a, a great percentage of people that make it big if they're producing something unique. Mm -hmm. But the ride is can be very quick. You can imagine a fashion photographer that's hot in New York one day yeah. is not the next year. So you got to be able, like I said, be willing to do things that you didn't especially picture now. yourself doing in the first. I think place. especially yeah. in this extraordinarily fast paced world and for our society's it's insatiable mm -hmm. need for newness. Uh -huh. um, it, it's just really, I would think for a new photographer starting out, it would be exhausting, extraordinarily daunting. Yeah, no, I get it. With the social so, media you have to produce. You just and that. Don't, I, I think marketing what, you know, if my daughters came and said, I want to be a photographer. I think I would tell them that I would encourage them to, to have that as a, as a passion, as a hobby, but not I love it. No, I think that's awesome advice. Um, and the thing too, like, you know, when Jim was talking about being an ex, or actually Katarina was talking about Jim being excellent in sales. So, you know, this whole big leap is not my concept, the zone of genius. It's Gay Hendricks uh, wrote the big leap and wrote a lot about this concept of being in your genius zone. He also talks about being in your zone of excellence, which it sounds like you were in your zone of excellence in software sales. And yep. that's sometimes the hard part is you're really just because you're really good at something doesn't mean that's where you should stay. I mean, that's that's the trap is I'm making good money and I'm good at what I do, but there's something missing. So I want to applaud you guys for being brave enough to get into something that aligned with your your passions. And and Katarina, I think it's awesome that you and Jim have found a way to make this work, because like I said, I don't know if my wife and I could make it work. <laughs> and, uh, I, and, and I love my wife and she's amazing. I think I think I'm the problem, but um, <laughs> Thank you so much um, for the time. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot of people that really benefit from this. Thank you so right. much. Thank it's you, just been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Derek.